This last year, there were a massive amount of changes that, that took place in the CrossFit world. Uh, more than I've ever seen in, our, in the CrossFit space and with the pandemic and transitioning of ownership with CrossFit, uh, just kind of changed the lay of the land uh, for the CrossFit space. And uh, I think one of the things that has been so interesting is I have always tried to be very even keel through, through my competitive career, through my athletic career. It's like, hey, like, let's just remain the same. And I think one of the things I loved about this last year is there were so many changes taking place. Um, you know, we got hit with the pandemic, ownership changed, but I didn't really see what I do day to day change all that much. Yeah, the biggest thing that, that I had change in my life this last year was Genesee and I had our uh, first child, uh, we had a baby boy, <laughs> and that was, uh, that was pretty intense. Um, Jack was born three months early, um, and uh, he came unexpectedly early. And uh, it was a very small birth weight, so he stayed in the NICU for three months, and we traveled back and forth every day, multiple times a day over those three months, uh, going back and forth to the NICU. So obviously, when you think of training, <laughs> it was not the priority uh, for that time being. It was not um, the thing that mattered most. It was like, hey, we need to go be with our son. We need to go make sure that, that we are fully present uh, in that moment. But at the same time, you know, I've been very fortunate to get the chance to, to be able to do CrossFit as a full-time athlete to, to, you know, this is, this is my career. Go to the bike, run 30 calories. Advance the plow box, advancing box every four reps. Completing 20 burpee box jump overs. This will be the first competition in might be seven or eight years that Genesee hasn't been to. You know, prior to Jack being born, uh, Genesee and I actually used to train all the time together. We, we had found this great little equation that we would do with workouts, depending on what the modality was or the loading was. And we would adjust and scale for her appropriately. And then she would like do the, she'd test a workout for me and then I would do it and she'd give me feedback. And be like, hey, this is where I think you could push it. And it was great. Like we kind of get this like this great training stimulus and partnership teamwork is really how, how, I, would, how I would word that. The, one of the biggest shifts that took place with her, with Jack being born and not having her be able to be in the garage with me is I had to make sure that it was very clear in my mind why are you in here, dude? I had to start asking myself that question again because when she was in the garage, she could push me and she knew exactly what to say at the right time to motivate me, to inspire, to just to stir something up in my spirit. Like she knew those things to say, she knew the looks to give. Uh, it's why she's been so effective in being my coach at like a competition and stuff like that. Cause she, I mean, she's just, she knows exactly what to say and what to do uh, to get me going. Staying in your lane. Your, gut, your judges will guide you if you're starting to be around five in your lane uh, while you're working. If you're advancing to another station, we're always going over equipment and not around. Squat snatches is what we're doing here in a ladder. You must be done in two minute increments with all of these lifts. And of course, the faster you go, the less those increments matter. Final weight 265 pounds at the end of this snatch ladder. There's just been a, a hotter flame that has been kindled inside of me uh, that, that I really, it feels really good to have. It feels really good to have. And it makes me feel a little, like, it almost makes me feel a little bit more competitive in a sense. It's because like a lot of other things have kind of fallen away and I've found clarity in, in what I'm doing. Olsen on the left, Cole Sager on the right. They came in first and fourth out of the quarterfinals. And 
in synchronicity. Oh, look at that. Race for it. It's won by Olsen. Sager right behind. <laughs> you can see Sager's fired up. I, uh... I'm actually really excited to, to experience that because of what I was talking about being in the garage and what I've had to develop inside of me. I'm really excited to see that come out on the competition floor. Event two, told you it was legless. Also some thrusters, Tommy Marquez. The thrusters have been no problem right now. Yeah, 27, 21, 15, nine thrusters. No problem for these athletes at 95 pounds. 10 legless rope climbs in total. This is a huge legacy event. Sager, easy money. Cole Sager doesn't have to sprint. He's gonna win. He's gonna sprint anyway in 449 unofficially. Dallin Pepper right behind him. He's done in under five minutes. And then all the way down in lane one, Sean Sweeney. Interesting here as these athletes make the final turn. Spray coming towards the arena. Cole Sager can see the gap, and Cole Sager has a burst of speed. James Sprague trying to hold off Cole Sager at the end, and he just might not have enough. Cole Sager looks like he has just begun this ruck race, and he will edge out James Sprague towards the finish line. Having Jack at home has, has brought this wonderful balance of what really matters most and has made it really clear like what the priority is and like training is absolutely it's super important but then it's like I want to get out of the garage I want to get I want to be done with training I want to be intentional I want to hit it as hard as I possibly can so I can go spend time with the family you know Cole Sager has been to the game seven times best finish was in 2016 when he finished fifth. Could this be Cole Sager's time? Everything had to be intentional. There wasn't time to to be lackadaisical about anything. When I was training, I was training. And I got in there and I was intentional about it because I did have to try to create some space because at some degree, like you have to be able to recover. You have to get some sleep. Spencer Panchik made a wild drive late and a baseball slide with Cole Sager. We'll have to check the chip timers. Panchik just kept going to work and then he found the sweet spot of the torque tank. He almost caught Noah Olsen and he wasn't close when he started pushing. Sager beats Panchik by .04 and remember how close Spencer Panchik was. Every point matters for him to get into the last chance online qualifier. Qualifying for the CrossFit Games would be special on any day, but for Cole Sager, maybe even made more special, being that today is Father's Day. He is a new dad. He and Genesee Sager welcome baby boy Jack home after uh, he entered the world a little bit sooner than they had originally expected. Spent about 12 weeks in the NICU, but now is home happy and healthy, and I'm sure would love to see his dad qualify for the Games today. Nikki, thank you. Jack Bourne.
everybody, let's give our athletes one more big round of applause. Hell of a show all weekend long. And now let's introduce our winners and qualifiers from the 2021 Noble Classic Games. Starting off with our first place winner with 583 points, Cole Sager. really make it clear like why are you in here and what do you really want and like get very serious with myself and ask those questions and then decide and then choose to move forward not relying on other people and that, that has been an interesting shift that I've experienced over this last year and really a really fun one to uh, to, to navigate to walk through Give it up to the fans. 